Hey everybody, hope you all having a good day and ting and ting and ting. Someone suggested that I watch this one and this one was called The Legless Ace. True story of Jug Douglas Bader, famous RAF fighter pilot. And RAF means Royal Air Force, that I know. So this has to be about the story about uh, a famous uh, pilot. Uh, during the war so you know what I mean uh, this should be interesting because you know it's talking about a specific individual that probably did some heroic things and uh, we're gonna learn about them it's always good to learn about people who uh, persevere and do great things in the name of some kind of a good let's YouTube whoops let's YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what this is all about of World War II were certainly some of the most incredible men in the history of modern warfare. But one man in particular outshines the others due to the incredible adversity that he was forced to overcome. After losing his legs in a flight accident, Douglas Bader would become one of the most famous pilots in the history of the Royal Air Force. In this video, we will dive into the famous story of the man who, despite his disability, shot down over 20 German aircraft and became an icon among his fellow RAF pilots. In addition, we will relive his final mission, where his Spitfire was cut in half, forcing him to bail out over German territory and the unusual experience as a POW that would follow. Enjoy. Sir Douglas Bader was born in London in 1910. He would join the RAF at the Royal Air Force College and, in 1929, was commissioned as a pilot officer in the 23 Squadron of the RAF in Kinley. He began to earn a reputation as a daredevil during his training, typically flying biplanes that were fast for the time, but had directional stability problems for the kind of stunts that Bader would perform. The higher-ups enforced strict rules that forbade unauthorized aerobatics of any kind below 2,000 feet, which he frequently ignored. Bada's early years as a pilot were marked with success. He defended his unit's title for the Hendon Air Show Pairs event and won the 1931 title with Harry Day. Eager to win it again the following year, he began to train for the next show, but tragedy would soon strike. On December 14th of 1931, he attempted a low-flying move, allegedly on a dare. As his plane dove to the ground for an aerobatic maneuver, the tip of the left wing teetered too close and made contact with the earth. Wow. The plane violently crashed and Bader received severe and horrible injuries. He was rushed to the Royal Berkshire Hospital, where both of his legs were amputated. The next few months of his recovery were excruciating and painful for Bada, as he pushed through, determined to regain the abilities that he had before the accident. He was fitted with prosthetic legs, and after being transferred to a new hospital, he continued to work hard at his recovery, eventually being able to drive a modified car, play golf, and even dance. Months later, after hard work and training, Bada believed that he was ready to fly again. After proving his fitness for the air, he hoped to be allowed back to the RAF as a service pilot. But to his dismay, he was rejected due to his physical disability. When tensions in Europe began to rise in the late 1930s, the need for fighter pilots was becoming more and more clear. After a personal endorsement from Air Vice Marshal Hollihan, Bada was eventually invited to report for flying test on October 14th, 1939. His grit and willpower pushed him to succeed so that in November, nearly eight years after his accident, he flew solo again and even turned the biplane upside down at only 600 feet in the air. He continued on through his courses, advancing to the final stage before he'd be permitted to fly Spitfires and Hurricanes. The following January, Bada was posted to number 19 squadron at RAF Duxford near Cambridge. Although he was a bit older than the other pilots in his unit, he experienced a stunning amount of success that was actually credited to his legs being amputated. When pilots experienced the high g-forces of aerial combat, the blood was believed to drain away from the brain and other parts of the body, usually causing them to pass out. Since he did not have legs, it was thought that he was able to remain conscious longer and thus have an edge over his able-bodied opponents. Okay, now, that's the type of dude you want on your side. I mean, you know, that's, that type of perseverance and, you know, will 
uh, to get back to where he was, even though with the, he had that disability. That's the type of dude you want on your side, you know what I mean? The, the type of person that will go above and beyond with whatever they have at hand to accomplish the task given to them. That's the type of person you want on your side. Over the next few months, Bada practiced flying in formation and other air tactics, often performing patrols over convoys at sea. He was eventually appointed to a flight commander in the 222nd Squadron of the RAF and experienced his first combat shortly after. On June of 1940, Bada was patrolling near the coast of Dunkirk, around 3,000 feet in the air, where he discovered a Messerschmitt BF-109 going in the same direction. Bada destroyed the plane by launching several bursts of gunfire, shooting it down for his first aerial victory. He suspected that it was a novice pilot due to the fact that it did little to maneuver, even though it was being fired upon. On his next patrol, just four days later, he also received credit for damaging an HE-111. After the operations in Dunkirk were over, Bada was moved to number 242 squadron of the RAF as their squadron leader, now flying Hawker Hurricanes. The primarily Canadian squadron resisted him as their leader, due in part to the low morale that they were experiencing after suffering high casualties in the Battle of France. But Bada eventually wore them down with his attitude and tenacity, and soon after, the squadron was back in top shape, becoming fully operational on July 9th of 1940, the day before the Battle of Britain began. Just in time. Bada and his squadron received their first victory on July 11th after gunning down a twin-engine German plane. He spotted the aircraft from about 600 yards away in dense clouds and closed the gap to 250 yards, firing two bursts into the aircraft and sending it crashing into the sea. On August 17th, Bada replicated the battle with another German aircraft, this time sending it into the waters near Great Yarmouth. Both casualties were confirmed by Royal Observer Corps on the ground, and neither of the enemy's planes had any survivors. Later that month, he scored two more victories after besting Messerschmitt BF-110s. Okay, I'm telling you straight up, man. I couldn't do it. Sitting in that plane there, you know what I mean? No. For one, I'm scared of heights, and there's no way I want to go ooh, all over the place, you know that? And he's doing it without legs. And here I am, able bodied, going, oh no, 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 no. I'd rather go into the jungle with an AK 47. <laughs> that plane thing there, boy, you know what I mean? People are, yeah, you, I mean, you're flying up there, you shoot a plane down, then you're flying through the debris, unless, of course, you 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 swing out of the way, but then you can't tell which way the debris is going to go up there, you know what I mean? And then you, you're sitting in there. You get shot down, the only way out is to eject yourself and float down in a parachute. You don't know where you're landing, or what's going to happen when you get there, or who is there waiting on you. I, of course, I wouldn't be able to fly no plane like that because I'm seven feet tall. But if if I was a normal height, uh-uh, not to me. That that part of the warfare is not for me at all. Period. Bada's squadron was eventually moved to Duxford again on August 30th, right to where the fighting was heavy. There, the squadron claimed ten more enemy aircraft victories. Bada taking two for himself against one tens and becoming an ace. A week later, on September 7th, he was nearly forced to bail out of his plane after he was badly hit by a Messerschmitt BF-109. But he was able to maintain control and recover the hurricane. Over the next few weeks, he and his team claimed multiple victories, and he was even awarded the Distinguished Service Order for his combat leadership. Throughout the Battle of Britain, Bada earned around 11 victories in his Hawker Hurricane. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his services, and his squadron claimed 62 victories in total. He was promoted to acting Wing Commander and Wing Leader on March 18th of 1941. Over the course of summer of that year, Bada flew 62 fighter sweeps over German-occupied France. He's doing his on thing. On August 9th, Bada flew a Spitfire Mark V on an offensive patrol over the French coast, alone as his trusted wingman, Alan Smith, was sick with a head cold. During the course of this mission, he was separated from the fighter group that he was with. He was deciding whether or not to return to base when he spotted three pairs of German BF-109s a few miles ahead of him. Never one to turn away from action, he dropped in on the group, 
letting loose a burst of deadly gunfire on the aircraft. He took down one of the German 109s on his initial dive for what would actually be his final aerial victory. He turned and was considering if he should attack another when he saw two of them turning towards him on his left. He was outnumbered and it was time to go home. He started to bank away from them when suddenly his fuselage, tail, and fin seemed to vanish in an instant. Most historians believe that he collided with a German aircraft. His plane began falling at a rapid rate, later estimated to be around 400 miles an hour in a slow Whoa. death spiral. He opened the cockpit's canopy and released the harness pin but could not break free. His right prosthetic leg was trapped inside. In a last-ditch effort, he pulled the tab on his parachute and was launched into the air, causing his right leg's straps to be snapped from the force. He was probably captured by German forces, who treated the RAF pilot with a shocking amount of respect. After arriving at a hospital, Bado was invited to visit an airfield by Adolf Galland, a prominent German air ace who had also been involved in the Battle of Britain. Still missing one leg, he was treated with great respect by Gallen and was even allowed to sit in the cockpit of his personal 109. Bada cheekily asked him if there was any chance of him taking the plane for a spin, but unsurprisingly, <laughs> Gallen politely refused his request. He formed a friendly relationship with Adolf Gallen, who notified the British forces about Bada's leg. He would also ensure a safe passage to drop a new prosthetic leg by parachute over a nearby base in France. The two would not cross paths again until later in 1945 when Gallen, Gunther Rahm, and Hans Rudel were taken to RAF Tangmere as POWs. According to one of the pilots there, Bada ensured that Rudel, a fellow amputee, was given an artificial leg. Despite their kindness, Bada was not one to accept being a prisoner. Throughout the rest of his time as a prisoner, he tried to escape so many times that the Germans <laughs> threatened to take wow. away his legs. After several more escape attempts, on August 18th of 1942, he was placed in Colbert's Castle, a location that was believed to be escape-proof. He would remain here until it was liberated on April 15th of 1945 by the 1st United States Army. Once Bada returned to Britain, he eventually retired on July 21st of 1946 with the rank of group captain. For the rest of his life, he would campaign for people with disabilities and shared his own story to prove that a disability did not mean the end. A biography called Reach for the Sky was released in 1954 with great success and would later go on to be a film. In June of 1976, Bada was knighted for his services to disabled people at the Queen's Birthday Honors that year. Over the course of his life, he had a total of 5,744 hours of recorded flight time. Douglas Bada's legacy as a pilot is only outshined by the work and advocation he did for disabled people everywhere which is still honored to this day. Instead of promoting my patron. Yep, that was a real dude right there. A real man. A real. It's crazy. No legs, became an ace, and then after went ahead and, 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 and started taking care of people. Thank you so much for letting me watch this here, you know what I mean? Uh, for suggesting this and, have, and uh, get to watch it. If you all uh, uh, learn something about somebody great here, comment down below, you know what I mean? Also, leave a like on the video. I'll leave a link of this video in the description so you all can go check it out. And I'll also leave links to uh, uh, videos of people sort of like that, not necessarily the war type people, just people who did great things with their lives, you know? Uh, hope you guys are okay out there taking care of each other. Cool runnings.